Hey guys. Man, I'm chose. Cause you're the only one who cut it on it. I was lost up in my ways, you kept me grounded. But I, but I lived in love. God bless you all. My name is Isini, and welcome to my channel. That's all I say. I'm gonna have to think on that. But yes, I just want to introduce myself real quick. My name is Isini Calderon. I'm from Honduras. I'm 17 years old and I live in Houston, Texas. I am a disciple. That's how I'm yeah. <laughs> I like I am a disciple. I'm a Christian and that's what this channel is gonna be about. Um words from God. Uh just a day with my in my life come to church with me i don't know we're gonna think on those things but as this is my first video today i want to share my testimony so let's get into it i am ecne i already said that i was born and raised in honduras so that's why you can hear the accent yes i love my accent though <laughs> sorry <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So my name is Isi, and he already said that I'm. I was born and raised in Honduras. That's why my accent is very deep. I just moved to Houston like three years ago, four years ago. So yeah, I was born and raised at church. My grandpa, he is a pastor, and growing up. He would always bring me to church with him and i was always into like the music worship ministry and stuff like that growing up i didn't love myself and i was rejected because i was black in the school i used to go to in honduras it was only hispanic kids so i was like that one person at the school that was black and that made me that made me feel very rejected i would get close to the kids and they would just look up and down to me and stuff like that so i did grow up feeling rejected and yes i used to go to church every sunday but i just want to let you this clear just because you go to church every sunday at 9 a.m in the morning does not mean you know Jesus. Just because you are there and you open your Bible doesn't mean that you, you have a relationship with God. And that's that was basically me. I was always at church, but I wasn't really loving Jesus, you know. But even though I didn't have a relationship with God, I still was into the church. I would just say it that way. I wasn't really loving God, but I was live I was loving church. And I was loving my lifestyle, but I wasn't having a relationship with God. And I remember that I got baptized at, oh my God. I got baptized when I was like 13. Yes, I was like 13, 14. And I got baptized by my grandpa because he's, he's, he's still my pastor. Well, he was my pastor. In Honduras and he baptized me and that day I can say my life changed and it was just I would just say it that way it was a hot mess since the day well I got baptized and then my life was a hot mess it just became a hot mess so yeah my life was a hot mess I got baptized and right after I got baptized I was serving at the worship ministry, but my life behind doors, I was very depressed. I still didn't love myself. And not only that, but I started looking for attention. I started looking for attention and I just felt like 
the only way I would love myself, it was if a boy would love me. Um, my dad wasn't there. He was here in the United States. And that affected me because I would go to like, you know, the events for Father's Day and stuff like that. And my dad wasn't there. Or for like my birthdays, he wasn't there either. Or when I graduated from middle school, he wasn't there. And that really marked me because I felt like he rejected me with the rest of them. That he just, I felt like he just rejected me, reject, <laughs> rejected me. Boom. My mom told me in ninth grade that we were moving and that we were going to this city in Honduras, Tegucigalpa, to request my papers to come here and live with my dad and stuff like that and at first i was excited but then i was like oh hold on they're gonna snatch my life basically they're just gonna like you know <laughs> so i felt like my life was about to change we got to the city and we got our papers and my mom was the happiest woman on this earth because she prayed about that for like about four years five years and she finally seen God God God's promise and heading out of the place I got sick and it was like this disease going around in Honduras and the kids were dying from it and stuff like that and I remember going home with my papers and I was happy and I was like avoiding the fact that I, I wasn't feeling right you know and I finally told my mother like about 8 p.m and I was like mom I'm not feeling well and she took me to the hospital they told me that I had the same disease like a bunch of kids had as well and they kept me there the whole night in the morning they translate me to another hub that's how you say it translate they took me to another hospital and yeah they took me to this other hospital and it was only for kids i guess because the first one my mom took me to it was this big hospital but like everybody would go there everyone would be there but this one they took me to it was only for kids and i remember as i was um walking in a kid died they were taking a kid out and I was like, wait a minute, because I thought I was going to be next. You know, like, I was just looking at all the parents standing there crying for their kids, hoping and praying they would be alive and stuff like that. And then it was me and I was just like, OK, what's going on? You know, so I thought I was going to die. You know, I thought that my life was over. I felt very hopeless. I was just a kid. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew that I was surrounded by kids that were dying or that they were on their last days. And I felt like I was gonna be the next one. I felt like I wasn't gonna come out, come out of that place alive. And I just tried, keep reminding myself that God wouldn't forsake me or leave me there. But, you know, I just felt hopeless. I spent about a week in that hospital and I got so much better. God really made a miracle. And I was, I was, I came out new. Like, <laughs> I came out of that hospital feeling so much better and being so grateful and thankful that I didn't die, but I got to leave and share my story that I could share what I've seen, but also be grateful that I wasn't part of those kids that couldn't leave. And I was one of the last ones in my room. That's something I remember. I was like one of the last ones getting out of that hospital because I was really, really bad. So I got better. I went back to my city, to my home. And I remember my church, like they were just so happy to see me. They hugged me. They were like, we were praying for you. And when I thought nobody loved me, I realized in that moment, I had a family that were praying for me. 
and that made me feel very very special and then i moved here like three weeks later after what happened and let me just tell y'all this that was one of the hardest things it was very very hard letting everything leaving everything behind and just coming here because i knew god had something better for me so i was really mad because i was leaving everything behind but i also knew god had something for me so i moved here why not and they put me back in ninth grade because i didn't have like my diploma from ninth grade in honduras so i was mad at that for like the longest because i was like one month away from graduating from ninth grade in honduras because you graduate from ninth grade ninth ninth grade in honduras but i just went back to ninth grade and i was a freshman in high school i didn't know nothing about gpa or credits or stuff like that so i was very lost for like about the first four four months of school yeah yeah i lied i was still lost in sophomore year and junior year <laughs> but freshman year was one of the years that marked me the most because it was my first year in a whole different country in a whole different school and i was just like okay what am i supposed to do you know and i sent a lot of pretty girls at school and i tried to fit in i tried to be like them dress like them talk like them and stuff like that and i just wasn't myself i lost myself i i tried looking for attention looking for validation and stuff like that. And I lost myself completely. And the kid my mom and my grandpa raised in Honduras, I was just a whole different girl. And I would look at myself and I would be like, who is this? This is not the Isini I, I knew. The Isini I know, okay? <laughs> but yeah, freshman year, I, I was depressed and I remember trying to take my life away it didn't work so i was just like well might as well just keep leaving because i couldn't i couldn't die like i tried but now i know it was because god has a purpose god had a plan and then sophomore year came and after being in this country for a year i went back to my country and everything was just so different I was in myself as well. I lost myself. Uh, then I got COVID in Honduras with my entire family for Christmas. And my grandpa, he is diabetic and you know, COVID with those type of people. <sighs> Y'all, we went to like a billion doctors and stuff like that and they all would say like different things like one of them would say he was gonna die the other one would say we still got a chance and stuff like that and i was like overwhelmed because something about me i loved my grandpa a lot i loved that man and hearing that he was gonna die and stuff like that really put me in a position where i just wanted to die if he was gonna die i wanted to die with him like that's just how it was and <laughs> i i was still depressed mind you at this point i was depressed for like about two years i was depressed and i tried to take my life again and one of my friends i remember calling her she was like it's not worth it don't do it i was like you know what i'm just gonna hang up i thank god for her life she was just there for me and telling me it wasn't worth it and i was just crying in the restroom i was just like why is this happening to me? You know, why is this happening to my family? Why during Christmas and during New Year's Eve and stuff like that? Christmas, my family ended up in the hospital and New Year's as well. I received New Year's with my sister and the babysitter because my grandpa wasn't okay. He had COVID and I couldn't come back for a lot of reasons. And I, I I just couldn't see my mother. That had me really, really mad. And I was just, I felt numb. And I was mad at God. I was mad because I thought 
I felt like he left me, you know. Then I remember watching porn, self-pleasing, and dating boys online. Y'all, it was horrible. Like, I just wasn't myself. I lost myself, and I just didn't even want to come back because I knew I wasn't the easy me that my mom raised I was very <sighs> shame and I just wasn't myself I was doing stuff that I knew they were wrong but I was numbing my pain with that I guess and I was still mad at God but before coming back it was this one prophet that went to my grandpa's house mind you we still got COVID he didn't care he was like, okay I'm gonna come in he he came in or why not and he started praying for us and he was like he he was just watching me and I was like I felt the Holy Spirit and I was holding myself because I didn't want to <laughs> y'all I was mad at God I was like why are you touching me <laughs> like leave me alone and I remember the prophet saying just let it flow let it go and I remember I, I yeah, I got in my knees, got on my knees, and I was just crying. I was crying, but because I knew that I was wrong, and I didn't want to accept it. I was crying because I I felt that he left me, but he was always there for me. And I remember he told me to lift up my hands, and God was going to place this garment in... <sighs> He was like, when you feel it, your hands are just going to go down. And y'all, just the way he said it, that's the way it happened. I had my hands like this, and I felt like something was like, Psh. and I was like, what, what is this? And I was crying because after for like about two months, I felt the Holy Spirit again. And I repent, but something was still missing. Something was missing and I didn't know what it was. So I came back and I knew stuff wasn't going to be the way they were. I felt like something was going to change. I went to this retreat and what it was missing, God revealed it to me in that place. He was like, you need to forgive your dad, forgive yourself, forgive your mother, forgive your own flesh, you know. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to, but I ended up being delivered. I ended up being free. I was set free, y'all. God broke chains and I just felt like he was building. He was coming with a bet. <sighs> I felt like he was coming with a better version of ECNE. I felt like, you know how you're in the potter's hands and he just forming you. That's how I felt in that place. And once I was out of that retreat, my life changed, y'all. My life changed. And that's when I started feeling like a misfit. I felt like I wasn't fitting in with nobody, not even my own church. I felt like I was set apart. I felt like... I wasn't part of them for some reason and I would try everything to fit in but I just felt like like I would run run and it was these wall here like you can't and I was asking God why and it made sense afterwards not at the moment he purified me he cleaned me he washed me and then he was like now I'm choosing you I was like, choosing who? <laughs> he was like, I'm choosing you. I'm choosing you to make a difference in your family, in your school, in your personal life, in your friends. I'm choosing you. You are set apart. You are the chosen one. And that hit me hard because I felt like I was nobody. After feeling like nobody would give a dime about me, he gave it everything and he still chose me, chose me, chose me. And y'all, 
I remember putting excuses on excuses and being like, but God, I've been hurt, God. I did this in the past and stuff like that. And that's when he led me to Psalms 27, chapter 27, verse 10 says, Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord, the Lord will receive me. <sighs> Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. And I, I began crying because I felt like he wasn't going to do nothing with my life. And from a moment, from a blink of eyes, he said, no, you're the one. You're going to change it. You are going to make things better in your life. He started revealing stuff. I started having visions and dreams. And he was like, I'm choosing you. I'm choosing you to be the one. I'm choosing you to spread my word. I'm choosing you as my messenger. I'm choosing you. And in that moment, I realized that it didn't matter what I did in the past. It was what mattered was that he still chose me. He gave me another chance in my past. What I went through, it was just my testimony. So now I can sit here and tell you that it doesn't matter what you did in the past. He is calling you today. It doesn't matter what you did in the past. Today, he's giving you a new chance. It doesn't matter what you went through. It doesn't matter who left you, who forsake you. God is saying, I'm going to pick you up. God is saying, I'm choosing you. It doesn't matter. I can still change your life. And because he did it with me. I know he's going to do it with you. And because he spoke to me, he cleaned me. He washed me with his blood. He made me whiter than snow. I can tell you that the way he did it with me, he can do it with you. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I don't struggle with stuff still. I'm not saying that I don't sin because I am flesh. This, this is flesh. But I'm saying because he chose me. He gave me a new chance. Now I'm doing things better. Now the easy need that's sitting here and talking to you is not the easy need that was two years ago, three years ago. But God chose me. And even though your mother or father forsake you, the Lord will receive you. That's what that's what his word says. I am talking to you. Thank you for watching this video. God, I hope God is speaking to you. The Lord is choosing you. The Lord is coming with something better. Just let him mold you. He's the potter. He can, even though you are broken in pieces, he can put them together and bring something new, bring something better. You don't know if what you went through is going to help others. I don't know, but I have the conviction. My story, my testimony is touching hearts. He is going to do something better. He is choosing you. It's not over. It's, he's not done. And he don't leave his stuff in the middle the good work he started, I'm telling you, he's going to do it. He's going to finish it. He's not done with me. So he's not done with you. Y'all, he just, I don't know what to say. But he did it with me. He can do it with you. He called me. He chose me. He made me new. I promise you he's going to do the same thing with you. You just got to hold on. Don't don't let go. Don't give up. Like the song says, don't let go. Don't give up. He's not done with you. He's not done with what he started. And now I'm sitting here. I'm smiling. I am. I'm very happy that he came and transformed my life. And you know, when you get to know Jesus, you cannot... Unknown, what you know, and you don't want 
you don't want to go there is no better other place you want to be at when you get to know the secret place when you get to feel his presence trust me that's just beautiful Be beautiful that's very very amazing he is amazing and now i'm a worship leader and now i am one of the youth leaders from my church i have <sighs> glory to god <laughs> that's all i can say i don't want to brag about nothing but i just want to share with you my life my testimony and i went from somebody with no identity to somebody who's now serving his kingdom who's now living for him who's now sitting here and telling you that because he did it for me he's gonna do it with you and i'm praying that you receive this testimony that it transform it that it touch your heart i am praying that you share this video that you like it that you subscribe and just Go and be great. God bless you. I love you, but God love us more. Bye. You called me. You chose me.